The opening of the second century found the nascent Christian church in its most challenging situation yet. Not only were Christians continuing to be persecuted by Jews, but now, due to the policies of the Roman Emperor Trajan, they were also being actively persecuted by the pagans as well. Compounding the problems the church was facing, the last living apostle, John, had passed away at the close of the first century, leaving the church without a living witness of Christ, and opening the floodgates for a variety of movements and sects, each claiming to be the true Christianity. These groups first began to creep out of the shadows near the end of the first century, and by the middle of the second century they were openly teaching their false doctrines. The bishops of the Christian church, appointed heirs of the apostles, were quick and strong in their response, rescuing the Christian faith from both destruction at the hands of Jews and pagans, as well as distortion at the hands of heretics. A few of the most important of these early bishops were Saints Ignatius of Antioch, Polycarp of Smyrna, and Papias of Herapolis, who had together been students of the Apostle John. St. Ignatius of Antioch was appointed, probably by the Apostle Peter, to be the Bishop of Antioch sometime in the second half of the first century. In AD 107, as Trajan was returning from a military victory in the east, he visited Syria in order that all citizens partake in sacrifices of thanksgiving to the pagan gods for his victory. Ignatius, as bishop of the area, openly refused to do so. As a consequence, he was arrested and taken to Rome, where the following year he was martyred by being eaten by lions in the Colosseum. While on his way to Rome, he wrote seven letters to various churches and to his friend Polycarp. All seven of these letters survive to us today, bearing a moving witness to the faith and zeal of this apostolic father. Ignatius's friend and fellow disciple of John, St. Polycarp of Smyrna, was appointed by John as Bishop of Smyrna. He once famously called the heretic Marcin of Sinope, the firstborn of Satan, to his face. He also was eventually martyred, bravely facing death for his faith in Christ in the year 155 at the age of 86. Only one of St. Polycarp's writings survives today, a letter he wrote to the Church of the Philippians shortly after the death of Ignatius. St. Papias of Herapolis was appointed by the Apostle John as Bishop of Herapolis. Unfortunately, not many of his writings survive to us today, but what we are blessed to have is very interesting. In his writings, Papias recorded and interpreted a variety of the sayings and actions of Christ as they had been reported by the Apostle John and others. Some of the sayings he records are not found in the four Gospels in our New Testament. As this great generation of men who had known and been disciples of apostles passed away, three heretical groups in particular gained momentum with their claim to be the real Christianity. All three groups claimed that the disciples of the apostles, or even the apostles themselves, had misunderstood Christ's teachings, and they said they were there either to restore or introduce the true Christian faith. The first of these groups, the Marcionites, was founded by Marcion of Sinope, the same one whom Polycarp had called the firstborn of Satan. He founded his organization in about A.D. 145. Marcion was born in about the year 85, the son of a Christian bishop in Sinope. In about 142, he moved to Rome, wooing the Christians there with a large donation to the church. He began teaching there that Paul was the only apostle who had really understood Christ's message, and, not ironically, that Marcion was the only one who really understood Paul. He taught that the God of the Jews was evil, and the Father of Christ was another all-good God who had sent his Son to rescue people from the evil Jewish God. He accepted only ten of Paul's letters and the Gospel of Luke as scripture, editing even these to exclude any reference to the Father of Christ being the same as the God of the Jews. He attempted to rid Christianity of anything that he saw as a Jewish element. As a result, he was excommunicated by the Bishop of Rome and set up his own rival Christian church, making himself the bishop. The second major heretical group of the second century, the Gnostics, had some similarities with Marcion, such as their rejection of the Jewish God, but also some very different beliefs. The Gnostics attempted to combine elements from other religions and philosophies, especially Platonism, with Christianity. They taught that because of a fall in heaven, various sparks of divinity had become trapped in the material world. These sparks were the souls of the elect who would return to heaven after their physical death. 
They claimed that Christ had come to pass on secret knowledge to these elect who were predestined for salvation. The Gnostics actually consisted of a variety of rival groups, such as the Carpocratians, the Valentinians, and the Cerinthians, with a variety of different beliefs. But these beliefs in particular seemed to have been the common foundational beliefs they all shared. The other major heretical group of the second century were the Montanists. This group was founded by a man named Montanus who traveled the Roman Empire with two women whom he called prophetesses. He claimed that his teachings were a new revelation of God and that he and his followers were able to have the Holy Spirit speak guidance for the church through them, leading he and his followers to reject the authority of the bishops and set themselves up as leaders of the Christian church. They even went as far as to claim that their new prophecies superseded the teachings of the apostles. He and his followers were also rigorous who denied that a person could repent of sins committed after baptism. For these and other errors they were excommunicated from the Christian church. As a response to these groups and to the accusations of pagans and Jews who claimed amongst other things that Christians practiced cannibalism and sought to overthrow the Roman Empire, the second half of the second century also saw the rise of a class of Christian authors called the Apologists. By far the greatest of these were Tertullian of Carthage and Saints Justin the Philosopher and Arrhenius of Lyons. Tertullian of Carthage was the first Christian author to write in Latin, the language that would later come to dominate Western European Christian writings. He was a lawyer and used his training in rhetoric, logic, and law to write eloquent and forceful defenses of Orthodox Christianity and to show the weakness of the systems and arguments used by heretics and pagans. Unfortunately, due to his rigorous tendencies, he later, in the early 3rd century, fell away from the church and joined the sect of the Montanists. St. Justin the Philosopher, often called Justin Martyr, was born in about 100 in Palestine to a Samaritan mother and a Greek father. After dabbling in various pagan philosophies, he eventually converted to Christianity, saying that he had finally found the true philosophy. He wrote several apologetic works against the pagans and the Jews, and also became a lay teacher of Christianity in Rome. He was eventually, in about A.D. 165, martyred there after defeating a a pagan in a debate. St. Arrhenius of Lyons had been a disciple of St. Polycarp of Smyrna. Later he became bishop of the city of Lyons in modern-day France. While bishop there he thoroughly investigated the various Gnostic groups by reading their writings and interviewing former members of their sects. Based upon his research he wrote a great five-volume refutation of these groups called Against Heresies, countering their claims and expounding the true faith. He also was eventually martyred. Irenaeus was also a major founding figure in the movement that began at this time to formulate and canonize the books which would later make up what we today call the New Testament. This process was largely initiated as a reaction to various forgeries being produced by the Gnostic heretics. In order to protect Christians from false beliefs, the bishops began sorting the authentically apostolic writings from later forged documents. In doing so, they largely used four criteria, ancientness, apostolicity, catholicity, and orthodoxy. In order to be considered authentic, a given writing had to be of a verifiable first century origin, had to agree with the other authentic writings of the apostles, had to have a history of wide use in the church, and had to agree with the apostolic faith as it had been passed down from Christian to Christian in the years since the apostles. It was this faith which the majority of Christians, few of whom were famous authors or bishops, continued to faithfully and quietly live each day, praying for themselves, the church, and on behalf of the whole world, teaching others of the hope of eternal life in Christ, rendering loving service and charity to all, and gathering each Sunday in homes and in churches to participate in the communal liturgical prayers and to partake of the Holy Sacrament of the Eucharist. They did this even as they endured slander, hatred, and persecution from their non-Christian neighbors. Those of them who suffered and died for the faith were especially honored by the Christian community, earning the title of martyr. The remains of the martyrs, called relics, were kept as hidden treasures and venerated in homage to the martyrs. The martyrs were also called upon in prayer to intercede before the throne of God on behalf of those still on earth.
Near the end of the second century, in about AD 190, in Alexandria, Egypt, St. Pantanus, after traveling as a missionary to India, founded the famous Catechetical School of Alexandria, whose early leaders, including St. Clement of Alexandria and Origen Adamantius, would be major influences, for better or worse, in later Christian thought.